I give you every tree, but there is one that I kept in the garden. That is the tithe of that garden. Ele, ele. So, what job will we do in heaven where they will pay us salary so that we can pay tithe? I hope you know Abraham existed before the law, and it was to Melchizedek that Abraham gave tithes. And I hope you know Melchizedek is a Tana, was not created, cannot be destroyed. It means in heaven you will still give tithes. It is what we hear that we did. What we hear. Many senior ministers had come to me and said, The way you are doing ministry, you'll be poor. This is not how they do ministry. You are going to be poor. Are you there? For a long time, people were not giving an offering. Because we wanted to make a point that we are not here for money. So you come, receive ministry, go. If you want to come tomorrow, you can come. They say, young man, you are going to be poor. So the job I was doing, I was using it to fund the ministry. Don't worry, don't worry, we'll pay for the bills. What we are doing is to create a service. If you have been very careful to observe the trends about Titan, once you would have discovered there are two categories of preachers that gets to talk about Titan. Okay, there is this sort of person that preaches Titan from the perspective of doctrine and no other strange of attachment. Okay, why we have on the other and this sort of persons that teach Titan because of the financial heaven it affords the church, you know, and so to them they see it as an avenue to keep manipulating people just to see that that income gets flowing so why we have on this other and these young persons who obviously from the understanding of the scripture that believes titan predicts the old testament teach it without having to cajole you or without having to attach any cause but just sees it as a principle that should be adopted not necessarily forcing people but just encouraging people to giving to titan and on the other end of these categories of people we see them as trying to dictate for people as to where they should pay the tithe and how they should pay the tithe and even to whom they should pay the tithe and this set of persons you see their actions reflected in the admis kind of a church administration they run okay where the titan should go how the branches should remit to headquarters now we have learned that even fathers no matter how influential they are, can actually make mistake. The case of Pastor Adeboye is a good case study. I am begging all Christians all over the world, let this argument about tithe come to an end. It's kind of disgusting to see how people on the platform, on the social media, internet, gets to use the dominance wave to cancel just any and every preacher that talks about titan that doesn't align with what Damina preaches. Forgetting the fact that the issue of titan as it presents itself is a minor issue when issues of doctrines and the basis of the foundations of our faith is consigned. And what you have to understand is that there is no preacher at any point in time that can boldly say he has not owed a position or made a statement that seems to be erroneous. I mean, even in the Damina himself, Several times on this platform, we've seen him said a lot of things that you will want to ask. Why would a preacher make this kind of statement? Of humanity. So Satan or Lucifer was a servant of Adam, not a servant of God. Lucifer was created to serve Adam. He was never in heaven with God. The creation of Lucifer was in Eden to serve Adam. Lucifer. So one day, Lucifer got to know what God told Adam. I believe it. You can check it yourself. So Lucifer said, I will rise above the congregation. I will be like the Most High. Adam was made like God. In the likeness of God. So for Lucifer to be like God, what Lucifer was envying was Adam's position of dominion. But you have to understand also when he said that Satan, all the angels are creation of time. Or creation itself is a function of time. I think that position is not absolutely correct. I mean, if you say angels are creations of time, and what that means is that what's between the, the boundaries of space and matter. So if you are saying angels also are creations of time, that means by now we should be feeling in Satan. We should be able to see Satan physically. We should be able to hold Satan. Satan should be within the boundaries of, of space and matter. Even though man we are created, okay, even though man we are created in time, that doesn't mean everything about man is the, within the function of time. Because the spirit of man will not pass away with time. Demons and angels 
Lucifer or Satan as we know it also will not pass away with time. Time will pass away. The created things that we see, every created thing that we see will pass away. But angels will still <laughs> be there to suffer the, the judgment that has been bestowed upon them. Likewise, man will put on immortality. So yes, they were created in time. Man were created in time. But I don't think angels are functions of time. According to Ebed Damina, he said, the reason why iniquity was found in Adam, or when Adam transgressed, was when he desired to be like Adam. First of all, there is nowhere in the scripture that suggested that Satan aspires to be like Adam. So whatever he's trying to say or he's trying to explain are from assumption, okay? And the only way we can know if those things were truly assumption is for us to compare it with scripture. Okay, so let's look at Isaiah chapter 14. How, how art thou fallen from heaven? Take note, the first place is this. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend to where? To heaven. Take note of that. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Okay, so look at, he will ascend to the heaven and exalt his throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the cloud. I will be like the most high. So, and this is where Ebedama inch his assumption or inch his explanation to say that because Satan wanted to be like God, and that means authority. He wants to absorb the authority God has given to man. But I beg to defy. Now, in order to establish my argument, first of all, the Bible says the heavens belongs to the earth. The heavens belongs to the Lord, and the earth he has given to Adam, to the sons of man. So the first thing we have to understand here is this. The authority which God gave to man was to have dominion over the face of the earth and everything that creeps upon the earth, and not the heaven. But look at where Adam took his rebellion to. Adam was not ascending to earth, which is the place of man's dominion and man's spheres of authority. He said he will ascend to the heaven. So the question is this, if his desire was to absorb the authority of man, why, they are, why, why did he want to ascend to heaven? Why did he want to exalt his throne above the stars of God? Why did he want to sit on the congregation? Because the scripture clearly made us to understand that the heavens belongs to the Lord and the earth he has given to the sons of man. So man's authority as prescribed by God is earth. But here we are seeing Satan wanting to ascend to heaven. If his desire was to absorb the authority of man, why then he, why does he need to ascend to heaven? Can you be able to answer this question? I mean, if he wants to absorb the authority of man, if there's any way he needs to ascend, he should be descending to earth. It should be ascending up. It should be descending to earth and, want, and come to our sub authority of man. For the full video of this rebuttal, see the link on the comment section. Yeah, I'm going to leave a link so I can see the full rebuttal on my opinion and how I oppose to what Damina said. So let's continue. But of course, you don't get to see this trend because this has nothing to do with money and it doesn't appeal to people's interest. Now, what I'm trying to say in essence is this. Before you get to cancel people's, before you get to a cancel preacher and block people from getting the privilege to listen to them, there's a need for us to properly consider what their emphasis are. Or you can even look at their church administration, their church structure. What do they represent? What are their major focus? What are their major emphasis? Before you conclude in cancelling people, we really need to stop this habit of cancelling every and any preacher just because of minor issue. You know, um, speaking of which, there is a video of Sermon, a recent video of Sermon, he talked about Titan, which obviously is a graduation. What he said one time about Adam eating his tight. So I believe this is a more better balance. And this actually explains how different preachers approach and see tithe. There are two reasons why I think the tithe issue has become a controversy in the body of Christ. Number one, and is because of the way we men of God drum it. We drum it because we need the money and because there have been a, a lot of misuse and extravagance with God's money. People have played all kinds of games with God's money at the expense of people's sacrifices. And not everybody in church, uh, people, God's people are not dummies. When they watch and they see that the value you are, pro you are producing does not match the kind of affluence and extravagance you are communicating, someone will be sensitive enough to ask questions. And because a tithe is a tenth portion, there is nothing to hide about tithe. 
tithe financially speaking is a tenth portion of what you bring and let me tell you if that is combined from faithful people it is a lot bankers am i right it is a lot what is there to hide according to scripture the tithe was supposed to be a mechanism to cater for priesthood and to cater for the building of the lord's house to cater for priesthood remember there was a time when the children of eli hophni and phinehas are we bible students that while they were boiling the meat they were given the privilege of using a fork to pick without looking the scene there became when they now started opening the whole pot and they would look for the choice part of the meat and use it and god said no this is not i gave you the privilege to at least pick something now there are all kinds of policies and principles i'm not going into the legalities of ministries and christian organizations and all of that but i can tell you it is because of the annoyance of people from the carelessness the recklessness and the misuse of god's money this is what has led people into this anger that has evolved into this campaign there are a few people who have intelligently studied and based on their conclusion they feel this is not needed but i tell you the root of most of this tight problem has come because of an a, a level of integrity that has not been effectively communicated are we together but i submit to you and as far as it is within the jurisdiction of this spiritual family i can tell you be a faithful tither tight is a tenth portion according to scripture one tenth now i know that a lot of people have taught to bring 50 percent of your tithe 80 percent of your tithe the bible does not say that if god tells you personally it is a personalized dealing don't create a doctrine out of it and punish people i mean before you can actually consider somebody not worthy to be listened to you should have examined the major part of his message what are his emphasis okay and speaking of which, uh, I saw this video that was shared of Apostle Ramos side where he said something which obviously a lot of person disagree with. And because of that, some persons resorted to calling him thief or liars. Come on. Without even knowing that when it comes to church administration, okay, an emphasis of um, ministry emphasis, this is one man that over time we've seen that all of his branches has high level of autonomy. And also, this is one person that I've been speaking up against prosperity gospel. Those who follow him understand that he hardly, he doesn't believe there is anything that, called, that is called a prosperity gospel. So, getting to see people coming to cancel the lives of our Messiah because of what he said in this video, honestly, come on. Now, I, I'm here to answer your, your questions. You have arguments about tithing. Because the time came in the body of Christ where some folks that were not adequately instructed in the things of God, man came up and said, tithing is Old Testament, is not. Uh, you see, it's not good for someone that is not licensed in doctrine to have a consistent congregation that he teaches. Um, are you are you with me? Yes, I hope you know Abraham existed before the law. Yes, so my first question is, what under what regime was he? Meanwhile, there are only two systems in the Bible. Only two systems of God's administration in the Bible. Is it that law or grace? I'm asking a question. Because I know you will not accept that Abraham operated under grace, but that's where he operated. But stay with me, stay with me. Don't believe. These days, when we say things, we need to provide evidence from scripture so that we will not make the scripture capable of private interpretation because it is not. And that's the reason why God did not use one writer. The, the book of the sons of the bond woman is only one writer. And that's a counterfeit. Do you understand what I'm saying? One author, the Holy Ghost, but different writers. So many different writers, but they say the same thing. So the Bible is not capable of private interpretation. Everything you find in scripture, you must find another scripture by another person that supports that your view. If not that your view is not biblical. Because the Bible is not capable of what? Private interpretation. Stay with me. Are you there? All right. So let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 4. Let's clear your doubts first. About title. He said, what shall we say then? That Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found. 
Are you still with me now? In verse 2. He said, For if Abraham were justified, can you understand? Underline justified if your Bible is not borrowed. If Abraham were justified by works, suggesting for the fact that Abraham was justified, have you been justified? Abraham had the same experience. And the Bible says he was not justified by works. Because if he were justified by works, he would have occasion to glory before God. But he did something, he helped God. But that was not the case. It means Abraham was justified. And justification is only a status that can be attained under grace. Oh, next verse. Go. Next verse. For what seeth the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. The righteousness of the law required that you need to keep every aspect of the law before you can be pro pronounced righteous. And the law did not succeed to produce one righteous man. Because no one was capable of fulfilling every requirement of the law. The law just showed the position of God, but it didn't provide any enablement for people to live up to that standard. And man was falling. So the law became a, a, an emblem of judgment. You see that? But what the difference in grace is that God gives us what is one through us that is satisfying the demands of the law. So this Abraham was able to attain to the righteousness that is in the Bible. And the way he did it was not by works. He, it was by believing and that word counted there is logic. It was logically counted as righteousness. It means the scales and the balances in the spirits were manipulated. And the end product of the inference was that Abraham was righteous. And there was no one that could be righteous under the law. Are you still following me? Should we continue the research for you to understand that Abraham operated under grace? Are you see it? It was still that grace, within the regime of grace, that Abraham discovered tithing. Before the law found expression. I'm just trying to establish Meanwhile, tithes under the Levitical priesthood is different from tithes under the Melchizedek priesthood. And it was to Melchizedek that Abraham gave tithes. And I hope you know Melchizedek is a Tana. Was not created, cannot be destroyed. It means in heaven you will still give tithes. Now, if you are careful to observe, you discover is one person that believes that tithing predates the Old Testament. And so probably that was why, and that was why he had to make that assumption, which I know. A lot of persons will disagree with and persons might want to ask questions like so how is this title going to be conducted in heaven now you are free to disagree but speaking of which i think this is one man that really gets to talk about money i have you hardly see him emphasize about money and probably the reason why he even had to you know talk about this is because the issue of titan is trending as far as this issue of titan is concerned this is not even the first time that we have seen this debate. Nigeria is just waking up to the realization of this debate. There are other countries like the American countries whereby people have been debating about this Titan entry today. There are still people that believe that Titan predates the Old Testament. And so is it is a is a practice that should be encouraged, albeit not enforced. Okay, there are, so whichever part you you want to fall into is okay. The good thing is that. The debate is everywhere. So you can choose. You can choose what you want to believe. It's good and fine. But let's not use minor issues like this to cancel just everyone, especially those that we have seen over time have been true to the gospel of Christ and also true to the tenets of our faith. So I do want to know what you think about this video, right? Go ahead and... <laughs> bamboozle me as again as you so i'm used to it just like i will always say if your comment is response worthy i will respond if it's not you no know, i know what to do to it so this is if i write